The Lord be with you. Thank you for joining me for daily prayer on this Thursday, January the 19th. Thursday, January the 19th, where we hear God's word and pray together. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Listen to my prayer, O God, do not ignore my plea. Hear me and answer me. Evening, morning, and noon, I cry out in distress, and he hears my voice. Cast your cares upon the Lord, and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous fall. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. On this 19th day of January, we continue in Ezekiel with the Old Testament reading. Today we have Ezekiel chapter 44, verses 1 through 16, and then 23 through 29. Ezekiel chapter 44, 1 through 16, and 23 through 29. Then he brought me back to the outer gate of the sanctuary, which faces east, and it was shut. And the Lord said to me, This gate shall remain shut, it shall not be opened. And no one shall enter by it, for the Lord, the God of Israel, has entered by it. Therefore it shall remain shut. Only the prince may sit in, in, in it to eat bread before the Lord. He shall enter by the way of the vestibule of the gate, and shall go out by the same way. Then he brought me by the way of the north gate, to the front of the temple. And I looked, and behold, the glory of the Lord filled the temple of the Lord. And I fell on my face. And the Lord said to me, Son of man, mark well, see with your eyes, and hear with your ears, all that I shall tell you concerning all the statutes of the temple of the Lord, and all of its laws. And mark well the entrance to the temple, and all its exits from the sanctuary. And say to the rebellious house, to the house of Israel, Thus says the Lord God, O house of Israel, enough of all your abominations, in admitting foreigners uncircumcised in heart and flesh to be in my sanctuary, profaning my temple, when you offer to me my food, the fat and the blood, you have broken my covenant, in addition to all your abominations, and you have not kept charge of my holy things, but you have set others to keep my charge for you in my sanctuary. Thus says the Lord God, no foreigner, uncircumcised in heart and flesh, of all the foreigners who are among the people of Israel shall enter my sanctuary. But the Levites who went far from me, going astray from me after their idols, when Israel went astray, shall bear their punishment. They shall be ministers in my sanctuary, having oversight at the gates of the temple, and ministering in the temple. They shall slaughter the burnt offering and the sacrifice for the people, and they shall stand before the people to minister to them. Because they ministered to them before their idols and became a stumbling block of iniquity to the house of Israel. Therefore I have sworn concerning them, declares the Lord God, and they shall bear their punishment. They shall not come near to me to serve me as a priest, nor come near any of my holy things and the things that are most holy, but they shall bear their shame and the abominations that they have committed. Yet I will appoint them to keep charge of the temple, to do all its service and all that is to be done in it. But the Levitical priests, the sons of Zadok, who kept the charge of my sanctuary when the people of Israel went astray from me, shall come near to me to minister to me, and they shall stand before me to offer me the fat and the blood, declares the Lord God. They shall enter my sanctuary, and they shall approach my table to minister to me, and they shall keep my charge. They shall teach my people the difference between the holy and the common, and show them how to distinguish between the clean and the unclean. In a dispute, they shall act as judges, and they shall judge it according to my judgments. They shall keep my laws and my statutes and all my appointed feasts, and they shall keep my Sabbaths holy. They shall not defile themselves by going near to a dead person, however, for a father or mother, for a son or a daughter, for a brother or unmarried sister, they may defile themselves. After he has become clean, they shall count seven days for him, and on the day that he goes into the holy place, into the inner court, to minister in the holy place, he shall offer his sin offering, declares the Lord God. This shall be their inheritance. I am their inheritance, and you shall give them no possession in Israel. I am their possession. They shall eat the grain offering, the sin offering, and the guilt offering, and every devo devoted thing in Israel shall be theirs. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. New Testament reading, continue in the book of Romans, chapter 9 now, verses 1 through 18. I am speaking the truth in Christ. 
I am not lying. My conscience bears me witness in the Holy Spirit that I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my brothers, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. They are Israelites, and to them belong the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. To them belong the patriarchs, and from their race, according to the flesh, is the Christ, who is God over all, blessed forever. Amen. But it is not as though the word of God has failed, for not all who are descended from Israel belong to Israel, and not all are children of Abraham because they are his offspring. But through Isaac shall your offspring be named. This means that it is not the children of the flesh who are the children of God, but the children of the promise are counted as offspring. For this is what the promise said. About this time next year I will return, and Sarah shall have a son. And not only so, but also when Rebekah had conceived children by one man, our forefather Isaac, though they were not yet born and had, not, and had done nothing, either good or bad, in order that God's purpose of election might continue, not because of works, but because of him who calls, she was told, The older will serve the younger. As it is written, Jacob I loved, but Esau I hated. What shall we say then? Is there injustice on God's part? By no means. For he says to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I have compassion. So then it depends not on human will or exertion, but on God who has mercy. For the scripture says to Pharaoh, For this very purpose I have raised you up, that I might show my power in you, and that my name might be proclaimed in all the earth. So then he has mercy on whomever he wills, and he hardens whomever he wills. wills. So far the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The devotional writing from the Treasury Daily Prayer for this day comes from Ephraim Cyrus. Glory to you, who by your cross has taken away the heathenism in which both the circumcised and uncircumcised were caused to stumble. Praise to you, the medicine of life who has converted all who are baptized to him, who is life of all and Lord of all, the lost who are found bless you. For by finding the lost, you have given joy to the angels that are found and were not lost. The uncircumcised praise you, for in your peace the enmity that was between us between is swallowed up. For you received in your flesh the outward sign of circumcision, through which the uncircumcised, formerly accounted as not yours, are now your own people. You made the circumcision of the heart your sign, by which the circumcised were made known that they were not your people. For you came to your own, and your own received you not. And by this they were made known, that they were not your people. But through your mercy, those to whom you did not come cry out after you, so that you would satisfy them with the crumbs that fall from the children's table. God was sent from the Godhead to come and convict the graven images that they were no gods. And when he took away from them the name of God that has, had adorned them, then the blemishes of their persons appeared. These were their blemishes. They have eyes, but do not see. They have ears, but do not hear. Your preaching persuaded their many worshipers to exchange their many gods for the one God. By that you took away the name of Godhead from the idols. Worship was withdrawn along with the name. That is, the worship bound up with the name. For worship also attends on the name of God, because then worship was also rendered to the name by all the Gentiles. At the last, the worshipful name shall be gathered and completely to its Lord, so that it may be fulfilled, that all things shall be subjected to him. 1 Corinthians fifteen, seventeen. We continue in prayer. O Lord, have mercy upon us. O Christ, have mercy upon us. O Lord, have mercy upon us. We are bold to pray together as he has taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We lift to God in prayer that his will be done. For Chris and Arlene, Colleen and Marilyn, Rob and Jane, Bruce, Dave, Nelva, Ellie, Clifford and Helen, Melissa, Rick, and Art. O Heavenly Father, send your Holy Spirit into our hearts to direct and rule us according to your will, to comfort us in all of our afflictions, to defend us from all error, and to lead us into all truth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.